uh, the table here is, is actually important and this is comparing emphysema versus chronic bronchitis in asthma acute asthma emphysema is related to smoking uh, and part of it can be genetic uh, genetic and uh, chronic bronch bronchitis uh, is related to smoking and air pollution while the acute asthma is is main for of hypersensitivity there should be somewhere of uh, some sort of hypersensitivity that start the process um, and the location is very important emphysema is something actually happening in the alveoli uh, while chronic bronchitis is happening in the bronchi the asthma is usually in the small bronchi and bronchioles so it's the location is totally different it's called like um, emphysema emphysema is the, the structure of the wall of the alveoli so there is no elasticity and it is going to when 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 the the alveoli are in the normal shape the, sh the the shape of the of the chest is not circular it's not barrel shaped that's the normal um but if the wall of the of the alveoli started to uh, break down and start to be destroyed and the elasticity is uh, impaired and you start to lose the elasticity it's going to inflate it's called it hyperinflation and it looks like a barrel shaped and this is for the emphysema for the chronic bronchitis it's it's not even in the alveoli it's in the bronchi so when the bronchi are inflate uh, inflamed um, and infected the mucus glands will increase the secretion and the signs of inflammation including edema uh, narrowing of the wall in the form of obstruction and so on while the asthma there's also an inflammation but it leads to bronchoconstriction so it's not only a matter of uh, edema and uh, and uh, secretions that increase to make the wall narrow in the asthma there is an actual constriction the muscles actually constrict um, beside increase the mucus production of course that leads to obstruction uh, but but the main thing is related to the already hypersensitive or hyper responsive long uh, um, bronchi bronchioles and small bronchi um, in the emphysema there will be um, some a little bit of coughing and marked marked dyspnea so the main thing is dyspnea he the, the patient is having um, hard time breathing a problem breathing uh, and, and a little bit of coughing uh, while the the chronic bronchitis is the opposite it is mainly coughing constant coughing and some dyspnea so it's the opposite of emphysema uh, the asthma the asthma on the other hand is uh, cough dyspnea and wheezing when we compare in regard to the sputum production obviously emphysema is not in the in the bronchi and this is where the sputum is more formed and the and it's it's basically destruction of the alveolar wall so the sputum is not something major it's little while in the um, in chronic bronchitis this is a, an inflammation an infection that's happening on the bronchi with constant uh, secretion of sputum that will be in large amounts and it's purulent and anytime we hear purulent it's related to infection uh, bacterial infection uh, in the asthma it's thick and tenacious mucus so it's not necessarily large amount it's not purulent it's tenacious means it gets stuck and it's thick and so on uh, cyanosis will not will not usually occur in the in the um, emphysema while it occur in chronic bronchitis it can occur and in the asthma only if uh, status asthmaticus and we talked about this infection uh, is chronic bronchitis is actually infection uh, emphysema is not infection emphysema is mainly destruction of the wall of the alveoli uh, acute uh, asthma it might be uh, and it might not it might be just hypersensitivity most of the time it is but or sometimes it is sometimes it's not uh, core pulmonary and we talked about this which is heart failure failure related to respiratory disorder or respiratory problem um, it's common in chronic bronchitis if if it is prolonged for for quite some time uh, it's common to occur while the emphysema it's it can be late complication at the end uh, or after a lo uh, long time and the asthma on the other hand it's rare to happen rare, rare to occur restrictive lung disease 
this is a disease in the lung that lead to restriction which means the lung the, the total lung capacity is reduced because of the impairment of the lung expansion uh, the first group is a problem in the chest wall that limits uh, uh, the, the lung expansion while the second one is in the supportive framework so it's not in the wall it's in the lung itself um, the first uh, group which is a problem with the chest, uh, chest wall itself include like kyphosis, scoliosis, kyphosis is like um, uh, uh, the, the vertebral column is bending forward uh, anteriorly uh, scoliosis to the side, polymyelitis this is paralysis that lead, it's a viral uh, uh, infection that lead to paralysis amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, botulism, muscular dystrophy these are all like um, from polymyelitis till the end this is all muscle weakness so the wall of the chest wall is uh, is becoming weak and impaired so that that's restriction of the movement of the wall kyphosis and scoliosis is more of physical restriction because of abnormality um, in the vertebral column that's um, restricting the movement of the chest wall uh, the second group on the other hand is actually in the lung itself from the framework the supporting framework of the lung and something like fibrosis for example idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis it's fibrosis uh, they, they don't know where it's coming from uh, it's idiopathic and when the lung tissues are fibrosed it will not be able to expand and the lung capacity will decrease so this is a restriction of the lung occupational diseases that we will talk about like pneumoconiosis for example that will lead at the end to uh, impaired or restricted lung mov movement pneumoconiosis this is a chronic uh, restrictive disease we just talked about it and it it, it, it occur if there is a long time exposure to irritant particles um, there are different types of pneumoconiosis depending on the irritant uh, and uh, the inflammation that occur because of the exposure of these particles um, will gradually de de uh, destroy the connective tissue so the functional areas of the lung are lost and this will restrict the lung movement and hence it's it's one of the restrictive disease and it's chronic restrictive disease uh, and the onset is usually insidious meaning it goes slow slow um, dyspnea start first and then increase and it increases everything goes slowly it's not not nothing sudden and treatment is if you're exposed to dust for example because of your work or uh, something like that you should move or should uh, work somewhere else and if there is an infection that accompanying you need to uh, stop the uh, treat the infection um, the the types of pneumoconiosis include um, cold workers disease or called anthracosis the second type is called silicosis asbestosis is the third one and then farmer's lung in all of these four different types of pneumoconiosis there is a particle that enter to the lung and lead to inflammation and lead to restriction on a long term in the in the, in the first case which is anthracosis or uh, cold worker disease the coal dust is the particle or the agent and it occur in the coal mines this um, silicosis from the name is from silica which is coming from the st sand so those are the people who or the workers who work in stone cutting sand pl blasting or mines or something they are exposed to silica all the time and they will get restrictive condition that's called silicosis asbestosis is due to chronic exposure to asbestos uh, like those are working in insulation or ship builders these are all uh, ex uh, exposed for a long time to asbestosis and again this is a chronic and insidious process so take long time to develop you have to be working for years to get that farmers lung on the other hand the agent will be fungal spores and it occur in, in, in hay so it's like grass around the grass people working in the uh, the, the farmers or something they will be expe to exposed to uh, fungal spores all the time it will elicit the same thing of uh, the inflammation now the vascular disorders the, the vascular disorders are like the pulmonary edema edema basically is accumulation of fluid between two layers or, or in a space that's not supposed to be accumulating in 
or or, or or accumulation of more than normal that's called edema so the, the the fluid accumulates in this case in the alveoli we're not supposed to have any fluid in the alveoli or in the interstitial uh, area uh, sometimes it occurs just uh, primary condition so just the pulmonary edema came uh, they don't know exactly um, why maybe inflammation or something happened um, and if that's the case uh, the amount of oxygen diffusing into the blood will decrease and this will interfere with the lung expansion because instead of the oxygen going through the alveolar wall which is really thin and then going to the uh, the pulmonary capillaries and and, go, and then go back to the heart instead of uh, of the oxygen um, crossing the alveolar wall which is thin now it has to, to, to cross the fluid that accumulated plus the alveolar wall which is too hard and normally the lung is able to expand and if it's it, it uh, the, the fluid is accumulating it will limit this expansion and this again due to the inflammation for example uh, and due to increased permeability of the capillaries when the permeability increase more fluid will leave the blood and go to accumulate in the alveoli uh, on the other hand if the plasma proteins level uh, is, uh, is low or decreased that will decrease the, the, the osmotic pressure on the plasma. And if you still remember how the osmosis work, the osmosis, the water, move from the less concentrated solution to more concentrated solution or, or from less osmotic to more osmotic. So in this case, if the protein is less, the osmotic pressure of the plasma will decrease and the osmotic pressure on the other side is still the same so the, the water the fluid will move from the the capillaries to the alveoli and accumulate and this is what we call pulmonary edema pulmonary hypertension the the pressure will be too much the hydrostatic pressure will be pushing the fluids to accumulate in the alveoli uh, of course if if this if this is a patient who's having pulmonary edema the fluid is accumulating in the alveoli so he will start this this is irritation so he will start to cough uh, there will be orthopnea because if he sleep the water uh, the fluid that's filling uh, or not filling that that's located and accumulating in the alveoli will give him hard time to breathe so he has to to stand up so this is called orthopnea we talked about this before rolls this is like the bubbling sound or the um, crackling sound that occur due to um, uh, the, the the air or, or oxygen carbon dioxide moving in the uh, in the fluid that accumulates uh, it can lead to hemoptysis and we talked about hemoptysis before which is coughing blood and this is has to be differentiated between hematemesis hematemesis is vomiting blood so hemoptysis is here and the hemoptysis is basically the edema will contain some blood so if he started to cough he can get some blood in the um, um, uh, in the in the cough uh, so the, uh, the the sputum will be uh, frothy and blood tinged how to treat that treat the cause so if this is pulmonary hypertension try to treat it if this is an inflammation or infection treat the inflammation so, uh, infection and so on supportive care should be um, done to support the, pa the patient whatever he needs if he needs um, uh, pulmonary exercise or any type of support uh, sometimes they might need positive pressure like the CPAP machine or something or mechanical ventilation in severe cases if he's not able to breathe anyway uh, and the lungs start to be destroyed sometimes he, may, he need, might need something that, like the CPAP and the CPAP is continuous positive airway pressure so this is air under pressure that enter the lung and it inflate the lung and then deflate like kind of artificial uh, respiration it's not artificial but it helps the respiration this is how the process occur of the edema that we just talked about um, the vascular disorders uh, uh, of uh, something like a pulmonary embolism and the embolus can be a blood clot or mass something that float in the blood and until until it get into an artery that is smaller than the diameter of the clot and then it will block it obstructed whether the artery itself or one of the branches whatever is um, having a diameter that is uh, smaller than the clot itself so the clot will be floating in the artery moving 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 to the to the uh, to the uh, periphery until it gets uh, plugged or obstruct 
uh, an, an artery or arteriole that is smaller than the uh, the clot. Uh, and this will depend on many factors, what the complications or what's going to happen depends on uh, d different factors like the material, what kind of material, size, is it large enough to obstruct a large artery or is it small to, to obstruct a small artery or arteriole, so are you affecting a large area or a small area and so on, that will depend uh, on the size and location as well, which part will be uh, obstructed and this will give us different effects. If this is uh, a small one, it will be silent. So it's going to go to a small area of the lung or something, and uh, it's not giving dramatic effect, so it just uh, they call it silent. Uh, if it is large area, that's not silent anymore. Uh, if it involves large area of the lung, so it obstructed a, an artery or something that supply uh, a big part or the uh, a big part of uh, the lung tissue. Um, if, if it is large, it's very large, it can cause sudden death because all of a sudden um, this will um, uh, the embolus will obstruct a large artery. So uh, if a big part or huge part is affected, uh, oxygen saturation will drop all of a sudden and the patient can actually die. Um, 90% of the pulmonary emboli start from the DVT or the deep venous thrombosis in the legs and it's preventable and uh, one and I think we discussed that before when we talked about um, the stasis in the, um, uh, in the in the lower limb or the legs veins that will help the blood to coagul to uh, coagulate and make a thrombus and this will go from uh, the, the veins of the legs and go, to, uh, go all the way until to get the inferior vena cava, right atrium, right ventricle, and from the right ventricle, it will go to the pulmonary trunk, pulmonary al um, uh, arteries, and it will move in the arteries and its branches until it gets stuck in one of these uh, arterioles. Of course, it, um, after the artery, uh, arteries, there are arterioles and capillaries, so there is no way the embolus can go through or bypass or go through the lung and cook and live from the other side it will be stuck in one of the arteries it will not even reach the arterioles to be able to go to the uh, pulmonary veins i mean it it will not reach the the, the veins in the other side of the lung so it's it will not go through the lung it has to to be stuck in the arteries uh, one of the pulmonary arteries and the part that was supplied by this uh, artery that's got that's got uh, blocked um, it will be affected and it can actually die. Um, if somebody is getting one of these pulmonary embolism, that will give a transient chest pain. All of a sudden, he get a pain because of deprivation of this part from oxygen. So he started to feel some pain. He started to cough. He he have difficulty breathe. Started to have difficulty breathing, which is dyspnea. Uh, and this is if it's small, it's small emboli. So small emboli, transient chest pain, cough, dyspnea. If it's larger, the chest pain will be more, and the coughing will be more. Uh, tachypnea and then dyspnea will be more. So everything will be more than the small, of course, because it's it's uh, affecting larger area. And if that to happen, uh, later on there will be some hemoptysis or fever and fever. So uh, hemoptysis again, it's coughing blood. Uh, and this is due to obstruction of a large area of the lung and it can lead to hypoxia uh, because of the affected parts is not doing the function of supplying the um, uh, of supplying uh, the body uh, with enough oxygen so that's hypoxia and the patient will feel uh, anxious and anxiety uh, anytime if you're like in a room in a tight room or the or inside a car or something and the the doors and everything is is, is closed you'll start to feel anxious because of the hypo of the hypoxia and restless and of course and tachycardia and so on um, if this is a massive emboli not just large it can give not only a large uh, or a deeper uh, pain in, uh, uh, it can actually give severe um, crushing chest pain to the extent of blocking a huge area that will lead to uh, low blood pressure um, uh, sudden hypotension uh, the pulse will be weak and the person uh, the, the patient can actually lose uh, consciousness um, how to prevent the pulmonary embolism from happening um, 
before the the any operation the patient has to understand what can can cause the embolism you need to move you need to raise your feet and so on uh, there are some stockings that can be used and these can press on the veins so that the blood leave the veins and go up to the heart instead of stasis or staying in the veins to form the embolism or thrombus exercise is is a good is good preventive measure for thrombosis and anticoagulants can be used as well uh, the diagnosis of pulmonary embolism is uh, radiography uh, if you get an, a chest x-ray this area will uh, the area that's obstructed or something will look different it's usually like a triangle or something that looks different than the rest of the lung tissue um, the more advanced will be lung scan mri and geography the angiography is a dye that's injected in the blood vessels and this will uh, show like it's it's going it's uh, and it will come to a certain area and stop or become narrower or something that that can give us an idea about which artery specifically is uh, occluded or affected by the embolus treatment uh, 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 you need to assess the risk factors first prevention will be better than treatment uh, uh, if there is prolonged bed rest and this will ca can uh, promote or can uh, cause um, uh, DVT or something so they need to use compression stockings to uh, push the blood up to the heart instead of stasis or staying in the in the, uh, uh, in, the in the lower limb to make the DVTs or the deep venous thrombosis um, surg uh, surgery uh can work through putting a filter in the inferior vena cava and this is success rate is not very good so it's better to avoid it from the beginning rather than putting a filter in the in the, in the uh, vena cava uh to filter any uh, embolus that's already formed uh, uh that's already formed and uh uh, and you are just trying to avoid uh, 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 to avo uh, to stop it from reaching the heart, and and uh, from the heart it will go to the lung anyway. Heparin uh, is anticoagulant streptokinase uh, that can resolve uh, the the blood clots. Mechanical <coughs> ventilation and uh, in severe cases mechanical ventilation. If there is a huge area that the patient cannot breathe until they um, take care of the problem. Uh, if, if if they can take care of it embolectomy is something that they are trying its taxis rate is not high but they can try it so embolectomy is embolus uh, removal embol embolectomy embolus ectomy ectomy means cutting so this is removing surgically removing the embolus this is a picture that's showing uh, the different types of uh, embolism pulmonary embolism uh, depending on the location and the size as that we described before expansion disorders is uh, when the patient cannot expand there is a problem that's restrict not restrictive but it is decreasing the size or something and the lung cannot expand for some reason um, and this um, include atelectasis, for example. This is the first thing. Atelectasis is collapse of the lung or non aeration Area of the lung either collapsed or it's not receiving air. Um, either a part of the lung or the whole lung. Sometimes it, it occurs that include the whole heart, uh, the whole lung, I mean, sorry, the whole lung all, um, all together uh, collapse. Uh, so that the, the lung will not, of course, will not be able to expand, and hence the name expansion disorders. Uh, of course, the, the blood, the, 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 the gas ex uh, exchange will not occur because of the, if it's collapsed already, so if it, um, normally it should be able to exchange air, um, but uh, the ga exchange gas, but if it collapsed, the tissues, uh, the, 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 the spaces will be lost, and the air uh, the gas exchange will stop le leading to, hy to hypoxia um, so if there is no air in the alveoli become airless collapse and it can inflame and become atrophic after time if left um, of course the blood flow will not be able to go to this area that that is that's collapsed already and the, um, in this case the ventilation and perfusion both altered 
And we talked about other conditions when, like something like um, emphysema. Emphysema, the the ventilation part is blocked, but the perfusion is okay. Is okay. The ventilation is air. The perfusion is blood. So atelectasis, both of them will be affected, not only one. Uh, so what what happened is obstruction. Uh, atelectasis one uh, one example this is caused by um, obstruction of an airway so if it's completely obstructed if it is um, uh, partially obstructed that can cause like inflammation and difficult breathing and so but if it's completely totally obstructed uh, the area that's that was receiving from this airway the area of the lung will collapse and this is called obstructive or resorption atelectasis compression atelectasis is not from the uh, alveoli itself it is somewhere else something else is pressing on it and it's called the compression atelectasis like a mass uh, any um, uh, something like sarcoidosis or uh, granuloma or tb um, i mean uh, granulomatous uh, tb granuloma or any other granuloma um, or tumor or something that's anything mass that pressing the lung and the lung collapse whether the, the whole lung or part of the lung um, on the other hand, of the surface area of the of the surface tension of the alveoli increase, and the surfactant, as we talked about before, uh, it's one of the of the uh, of the factors. It's the main uh, factors or the main component that will dec uh, will decrease the surface tension to keep the alveoli open. So if if the, there is the, the if there is not no enough surfactant the, the 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 surface tension will increase and the lung can actually uh, st uh, pre uh, be prevented from expansion um, so this is increased surface tension so again in, in the surface tension should be decreased uh, to keep the the, uh, the alveoli opened if that's increased the alveoli will collapse uh, fibrotic ch uh, fibrotic ch uh, change or uh, fibrotic tissue I mean uh, if, if the if the lung so if an area of the lung become fibrotic for, for some reason, uh, the expansion will be restricted and it can collapse as well. Uh, Post-operative atelectasis, if there is a surgery um, that affected the lung or something, the lung sometimes can collapse after, um, after the surgery. Um, so this is different types of collapse, obstruction collapse, uh, non-aeration collapse, which is obstruction, um, atelectasis obstruction of the bronchus or if there is a mass or something that's pressing on the lung it can actually collapse so this is all atelectasis and if somebody is having atelectasis part of the lung is collapsed and uh, if this is small it will be asymptomatic the, the the person will not have symptoms it's a small spot that's not giving um, a, a, a real effect so it's asymptomatic if this is large enough of course, the patient will have difficulty breathing, which is dyspnea. Uh, heart and respiratory rates will increase to compensate for the part that that was that's not functioning, and um, it can it can lead to chest pain as well. Uh, expansion disorder, uh, including pleural effusion, and pleural effusion is, uh, as we talked about before, it is effusion of fluid in the pleura, meaning excessive fluid will accumulate in the pleural cavity which is basically between the two um, two membranes which is the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura we're supposed to have a minimal amount that st uh, that, that keep the the two layers ad uh, ki kind of adherent with each other or it's not really adherent i mean there is there should be a smooth movement or friction uh, no friction between the two layers but if that's the case it will start to accumulate enough uh, that will will um, give the 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 lung the freedom to um, uh, retract and collapse so pleural effusion uh, and and if that the case the the pressure inside the pleural cavity will increase the two pleural membranes will separate and the problem is the the inner one which is the visceral pleura is adherent to the lung the outer one, which is the parietal, is adherent to the chest wall. The chest wall is um, pulling outside and the lung is pulling inside and they are together. So that will keep the lung um, inflated and in good, um, in good condition. It's working. But if the two layers separate, so nothing will be pulling out. 
uh, because the two the two layers are supposed to be together if they separated the one that's with the chest wall will expand and uh, and the other one with the lung will separate and the lung uh, by nature will, will will try to um recoil so that the, so that if that to happen if you give it the chance the lung will actually collapse um, this can be oxidative effusion meaning uh, the the fluid that accumulated is actually coming from inflammation it can be translate and translate means it is more of watery not inflammation not inflammatory fluid so the oxidation is in, in, inflammatory fluid uh, the translate is more of watery effusion uh, and it, this is called hydrothorax so hydro hydro means water thorax means thorax which is in this case is a, is a plura so this is the presence of hydro which is water effusion in the plural space the hydrostatic pressure will start to increase uh, and the, the, the two layers separate or it can come from decrease it can come from increased hydrostatic pressure pushing the the water effusion in bit in between the two layers of the plura or increase osmotic pressure in the blood vessels so that the, the water effusion or the water compartment of the blood will leave the blood uh, moving via osmotic pressure again from less concentrated to more concentrated which is osmosis or less osmotic to higher uh, uh, low osmotic to high osmotic moving from, from the blood vessels to in between the uh, uh, the, the two pleural uh, membrane which is inside the pleural cavity in either cases, um, uh, the lung, part of the lung that's affected will start to recoil and collapse and in the, the patient will feel dyspnea. Of course, any one of those is dyspnea when you interfere with the normal breathing, uh, ch chest pain that come and goes, which is cyclic, um, the respiratory rate and heart rate. Uh, you can take it by default. Anytime you're having a problem with the lung, that will lead automatically to dyspnea because of difficulty breathing. And if you're not breathing good, you're not giving the blood uh, enough oxygen, not giving the body enough oxygen. So as a compensation, the body will uh, compensate by increasing the rates, uh, the heart rate and the respiratory rate. So it goes, it goes automatically, it goes without saying. Treatment uh, if there is a fluid or something, you should remove it, remove the, co the cause. And not only remove it, but you need to al also analyze it. Because is it just um, watery oxidate? Is it, which means increasing hydrostatic, hydrostatic pressure, maybe hypertension or something, so you can treat it. Uh, is the fluid uh, ox uh, oxidative? Uh, on the other hand, it means there is an inflammation that needs to be treated. If it is bloody, for example, it can be coming from um, a cancer or tumor somewhere or TB or something. So the nature will tell you a lot about uh, the causing um, or the cause of uh, the effusion. Uh, you can do chest drainage. You can drain the fluid out. Thorac thoracosynthesis means... Um, um, like a needle, they introduce a needle and they withdraw the fluids in between the uh, uh, the two layers to relieve the pressure. And um, most of the time, it will come back if the if the if the cause was not treated. Pneumothorax, which is the next uh, disorder. Pneumothorax, pneumo means air. Thorax, in this case, means the pleural cavity. Just as we said hydrothorax for example hydro means water thorax means the thorax but in this case it means the pleural cavity so uh, hydrothorax is watery effusion uh, in, um, in the pleural cavity pneumothorax is air in the pleural cavity um, there are different types of pneumothorax uh, it will depend on um, um, the, the what what is happening besides the introduction of air into the pleural cavity if the air entered the pleural cavity from the internal passageway like from the bronchi or bronchioles and there is a problem that uh, or the or the alveoli and in, in the the air start to get an access somehow to the pleural cavity and accumulate there but there is no opening to the outside no opening in the chest wall this is called uh, the uh, the closed pneumothorax um, simple or spontaneous um, pneumothorax means tear on the surface of the lung and this is why the air was introduced 
uh, this is a simple one it, it just occurs spontaneously but secondary can can be caused by something else like somebody's having emphysema and the emphysematous part which is becoming it's not the regular alveoli it's the it's um the destruction of the alveolar wall will make a large alveolus that's called a blip and this can actually rupture and if it rupture it can introduce air uh, to the pleural cavity uh, or it can be secondary to a tumor or tb uh, and it's eroding eroding until it gets into uh, the pleura the two pleural um, uh, membranes and it will uh, make an opening uh, that will uh, give an access to the air to get in, in between the the two layers of the pleura which is the pleural cavity so there is open there is close closed and there is tension pneumothorax uh, the the closed pneumothorax is which is the the secondary or idiopathic and again it can be caused by rupture of emphysematous blip the open one is actually an opening to the chest wall uh, like example somebody got uh, a wound or, or got um, a fracture of of the reps uh, that's opened through the through the the pleura to the outside or st uh, stepping wound or something like that that can make like an actual opening to the outside so it's an opening in the chest wall and if that the case the air will be opened uh, between the outside of the body and the, the pleural cavity it's called open um, the tension pneumothorax is the most dangerous one and the tension pneumothorax is there is an opening and the opening somehow created a valve like entrance to the air so the air can enter only and it cannot leave open pneumothorax that we talked about the, the the air can can go in and out so it's 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 more milder but the tension the air can only get in and it's trapped in somehow like a flap or something uh, or uh, work like a one-way valve so the air goes from outside to the pleural cavity and it cannot leave out so uh, it will increase uh, the amount of air in the pleural cavity increase 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 and the lung is um, uh, collapsing 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 and it's it's dangerous unless uh, something done to, uh, to to stop that even even if if, if if they have to open the flap and remove the valve which is not the best solution but better than tension pneumothorax so the air entry in the closed is from inside from the open it's from outside um, and the tension it's usually from um, uh, from outside the uh, from the thorax itself uh, or it can be tear in the lung tissue but again it's one way uh, in in all cases there will be some atelectasis which is lung collapse um, but the closed will be kind of limited uh, because the leak will be will be sealed when the lung collapse so collapse will, will not this will not have um, an impairment effect on the lung um, while the open pneumothorax it's open so there will be some collapse and the unaffected lung which will um, stay intact will, will compress it will push the mediastinum toward the uh, other side and this can can the problem with that is it will start to move that can actually affect the venous return to the heart because it's, it's going to be pushing to one side uh, on the tension pneumothorax it's the other way around the unaffected lung which will become full of air will compress the other side so that it can have effect on the lung uh, i mean on the heart which is decrease venous return uh, while the closed one no effect on the cardiovascular uh, signs of course it's the same thing uh, the respiration will be increased it will be labored it will be dysnic it will be compensated by tachycardia tachypnea and so on plural uh, pain anytime that introduced in the plural cavity in between the two plural plural layers will cause pain um, the the sound will be absent in the closed type uh, in the open type because it's closed already so the air is not like moving in and out to make sound so the breathing sound will be absent uh, the area that contain air you, you, ca you can't hear the breathing on it and this will lead to hypoxemia 
uh, in the open one there will be the sucking noise because the air comes in and out sucking in so that will give you the sucking noise if it is large enough and the blood pressure will go down and the moderate hypoxemia uh, the most uh, the, the more severe one is the tension pneumothorax um, breath sound will be absent in the affected side and the trachea will be deviated and obviously uh, the the, uh, the 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 blood return or the venous return will be affected and it can lead to cyanosis and in this case there will be severe hypoxemia uh, so um, uh, closed obviously is a mild form open is a moderate form tension is a severe form with uh, closed having some sort of hypoxemia mild kind of open will be moderate hypoxemia while the tension will be severe hypoxemia so this is uh, comparing the um, the three different types this is closed which is from inside and the first one which is closed pneumothorax it's from inside um, open is from outside uh, tension is one way valve um, if this is a, if this is a, an, uh, a, um, uh, a condition of pneumothorax what's the emergency, tre emergency treatment Th this need hospitalization um, if this is an open thorax uh, or a sucking wo uh, wound or something uh, it, uh, it, it need to be covered by something that's occlusive like not a cotton or, cotton or or gauze or something it's something occlusive to stop uh, the the air from entering uh, from moving in and out in general um, and um, the, the most important thing is to to make sure that tension pneumothorax is not happening like a piece of uh, of the um, of the cover that you're putting is making a one-way valve or something like that so you, um, you will need to ensure that tension pneumothorax does not occur uh, the penetrating object and this is something that um, uh, that's important if there isn't penetra so like penetrating wound or something something entered uh, whether it's an object or a stepping wound or something like that it shouldn't be removed until the medical assistant is available because if, if, if it is removed it's blocking the entrance if it is removed the air will enter in and it even more make the condition worse so it, it's it should be removed under medical supervision only because when when they remove it they will close it right away by the um, uh, by the right medical um, uh, supplies that need that's needed in this case so once they remove it they will block the entry of the air but if you remove it only and um, the lung can can completely collapse tension pneumothorax if there is something that's temporary that can be done is change the valve the the temporary valve that's happening or the flap that's making it in one-way valve turn it to open pneumothorax to removing the, lo the loose tissue that's making the valve it's not treatment but at least it's not tension pneumothorax flail chest flail chest is a chest that's moving in all directions and it's usually come from uh, rupture of the of the reps uh, and the reps are moving independently uh, during inspiration uh, like the, like uh, this picture here during inspiration uh, it's it's going to move the, the wall itself is going to move in uh, pushing the other side while expiration it's moving out and, and pulling the other side so this is flail chest uh, and it can push to the uh, on the surrounding and it, again it's, it is fracture of the reps uh, um, the limited expansion can lead to hypoxia and decrease uh, inspiratory volume that we talked about before um, RDS, which is um, or the IRDS, Infant Respiratory Distress Syndrome. Uh, this is a respiratory distress uh, that's 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 usually occur in the premature birth, and we talked about this before when we talked about surfactant, and this occurred during to lack of surfactant. Um, it can be lack of surfactant due to a disease or something or it can be actually just because he's premature before seven months for example and um, at seven months this is where the maturation of the lung uh, start to occur it's not 100 percent but it's good enough uh, that um, uh, the infant will have 
enough surfactant to keep his uh, uh, lung uh, breathing and um, and if if this is not the case increase in case of prema uh, prematurity um, the surfactant is not enough to decrease the surface tension of the alveoli and the alveoli can actually collapse uh, and also the uh, the alveoli are poorly developed it's not fully developed yet so it's not able to inflate uh, so in that if that the case uh, diffuse collapse will occur which is atelectasis and the blood flow when it come it will be uh, decreased as well the pulmonary blood flow vasoconstriction will occur and this will lead to severe hypoxemia and that's why they usually put these uh, infants in, uh, in, in an incubator because it can take care of the problem and they can take care of the uh, of the infant uh, the poor lung perfusion and the lack of surfactant to occur together um, uh, that can increase the alveolar permeab capillary permeability so the fluids start with protein start to leak in the interstitial fluid and it can form hyaline uh, in this case uh, of course the, the the infant will not be able to breathe uh, will have difficulty breathing uh, at birth or shortly after a few hours or something and he's breathing shallow and rapid because he's trying to compensate for uh, for for the lung that's collapsing uh, flaring of the nose is always a sign of um, difficulty breathing uh, he will be producing some frothy sputum uh, expiratory grunt he'll be grunting making that sound during expiration blood pressure of course will fall because of the of that compression and that will lead to cyanosis because of the hypoxemia uh, peripheral edema will occur severe hypoxemia uh, and responsiveness actually it can lead to death if it's not taken care of breath sounds will decrease respiration will be irregular he can stop breathing sometimes and so on uh, to diagnosis the most important thing is gas analysis and this will will show severe hypoxemia treatment um, glucocorticoid to the mom uh, uh, if she's expected to give premature labor because glucocorticoid is a maturating agent Beside it's anti-inflammatory, but most importantly, it is maturating agent for the surfactant. So it accelerates the process. Even if uh, this infant will be born like in five or six months or something, um, and they can prematurely um, maturate uh, the, the surfactant and make it ready to decrease the surface tension of the infant. So glucocorticoid synthetic surfactant. Uh, if this neonate is high risk and expected to have something like that, they can give him some surfactant that's in synthetic, which is some desensized, desensized the surfactant that's have uh, in, 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 uh, same chemical properties and functional properties. Um, and the and the incubator, the, the use CPAP machine, which force the air in and out if the lung is not being able to breathe in and out because of the surfactant is not enough yet, so they can push the air under pressure a little bit pressure in and out so the infant can breathe uh, if he's having hypoxemia high, um, uh, oxygen will be used uh, nitric oxide drugs can be used to dilate the blood vessels um, so this is for the um, infant respiratory syndrome um, adult respiratory distress syndrome, uh, distress syndrome is due to injury of the alveolar wall and the capillary wall so this is another type so um, the the type 2 alveolar cells or the um, uh, surfactant producing cells are okay it's well developed he's an adult everything is fine but somehow injury happened uh, injury occurred to the alveolar wall and the capillary uh, membrane like uh, accident or, or or injury or something happening and this will lead to chemical mediators being released and it will increase the permeability of the alveolar capillary membrane and the fluid will leave the capillaries proteins will leave the capillaries and it will accumulate in the alveoli and this will actually damage the surfactant producing cells so this is different than the infant rds this is the ards or adult respiratory distress syndrome the surfactant producing cells are there it's mature everything is fine and then it become uh, damaged or destroyed uh, so that will lead to necrosis and fibrosis and actually the patient can actually um, die so if the patient survives he will have necrosis and fibrosis because of the accumulation of the fluid huge amount of inflammation and killing different types of cells 
type 1 and type 2 and type 2 is the one that produces the surfactant uh, and usually it's associated most of the time with multiple organ dis um, dysfunction due to uh, the respiratory distress or due to the accident or something and it can lead actually to failure of different organs so the patient in this case who's having ADRS will have this nia he will be restless restlessness because of uh, of course hypoxia uh, rapid shallow res respiration because he's not able to breathe normal so he will uh, the, the breathing will be shallow and fast tachypnea to try to catch up uh, and get some, more, some air uh, tachycardia increased heart rate to try to transfer more blood because of the low oxygen uh, this can lead actually to respiratory and metabolic acidosis and respiratory acidosis we talked about this before is acidosis that's caused by decreased breathing and if you're not breathing you're not kicking out carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide accumulate react with water making carbonic acid which is respiratory which is acidosis metabolic acidosis can occur plus the respiratory so this is a condition that's both cases are occurring metabolic acidosis due to production of acids in the body due to fail failure of other organs uh, it should be treated uh, by treatment of the underlying cause whatever is causing this problem and supportive respir respiratory therapy so this is showing the adult respiratory distress syndrome how to occur uh, and the uh, acute respiratory failure if, if if that the case if it leads to acute respiratory failure whether we're talking about the ARDS or infant or something um, acute respiratory failure in general uh, can come from one of the following conditions acute or chronic conditions something like emphysema um, pro prolonged emphysema can actually lead to uh, respiratory failure uh, it can be acute and chronic uh, diseases like emphysema plus something happened acutely um, uh, uh, to um, to add up to the chronic condition that's happening that lead to failure uh, acute respiratory disorders can occur neuromuscular disorders for example the 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 uh, the, uh, the the neuromuscular disorders will lead to the muscles not getting in get good innervation so the muscles uh, of of uh, of uh, respiration the respiratory muscles are not moving much so this can lead to actually failure um, uh, treatment is usually uh, treatment uh, of the primary problem it has to be resolved first see what's the problem is it emphysema is it acute bronchitis severe is it um, severe asthma is it uh, severe infection inflammation so on neuromuscular disease whatever the problem is the initial problem it need to be taken care of uh, and then supportive treatment uh, to maintain the respiratory function uh, if, need, if needed CPAP or if needed oxygen if needed support treat uh, support uh, even mechanical ventilation until the uh, the condition is resolved um, and that's it for um, this chapter of chapter 13 which is the uh, respiratory system disorders